Action sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. We have a liftoff. Lift off on Apollo 11. Good evening. Welcome to PCKC TV. This is our third installment of PCKC TV. We're really excited to be back with you. Hopefully you tuned in last week. We had a great Q&A session with uh, Christopher Jackson. An awesome virtual uh, walkthrough of the Hammerspace Community Workshop. Uh, thanks to our good friend uh, Jelly Bean and uh, the good folks at US Toy. So we're continuing the fun tonight. We've got actually the first of our regular uh, scheduled shows, and this is going to be talking comics. We're going to be doing this every Wednesday uh, at seven o'clock. And uh, I couldn't think of two better people to be talking comics with. So uh, let's get this. Uh, let's get the ball rolling here. I'm going to bring in uh, Mr. Uh, Christopher Jackson. The uh, uh, owner of uh, Planet Comic Con Kansas City and the CEO of Planet Productions. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Doing well, John. Thanks. Thanks for bringing me on. Yeah, it's it's great to have you back here. Obviously, of course, what else would we be doing on a Wednesday night? Uh, there's there's not a lot of places that we could probably be running around and running out to. Uh, but it's uh, it's fun. Uh, we get to talk about something that's really near and dear to your heart. Um, we talked, we touched on this last time. Uh, Planet Comic Con Kansas City is a uh, you would think is is it's unusual, but you would think it would not be an unusual thing. How much of a comic focus uh, that show has, and that's something that's really uh, important to you. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's it's kind of a cool thing. And of course, then there's a very special relationship that's that's at the heart of this too. So. Maybe you can introduce, uh, you know, uh, your your partner in crime for this uh, for this new uh, series here that we have with our live stream. We're bringing on tonight with us uh, the owner of Elite Comics, William Bindrup, one of my oldest friends in, here in Kansas City. I moved here in 1995 and met William not too long after that. Well, and uh, well. William is, as I said, the owner of Elite Comics in Kansas City, one of the top stores in the city. So, William, it's great to have you on, man. Sure, thank you. So it's. Uh, Let's let's talk a little bit of comics, but before we get to this, I I do want to kind of touch on uh, a, a few things. And by the way, let's uh, just let's let's go ahead and do the uh, the the shameless plug, if you will, right? Uh, if you if there you know, yeah, if you don't know Elite Comics, you need to know Elite Comics. And William and Elite Comics uh, were there at the beginning of Planet Comic Con Kansas City, and have been great supporters of the show for the entire twenty year time. So much appreciated, William. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to do it. It's one of our biggest weekends of the year, every year. So, Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot first here, um, just because we need to get a little bit of the origin story here. Okay. Um, how did you and William first meet up? My recollection is, which I think will be challenged by William, is that I met William at his store. I moved to Kansas City in 1995, late 95. I'd lived in Los Angeles for 10 years before that. Moved in late 95 to, to Kansas City. And one of the first things I always do is go around and check comic stores mm -hmm. and conventions. I'd actually been out to go to the uh, convention put on by the Kansas City Comic Book Club in 1994 just to see if there was a market here that I could thrive in. And uh, then I, and when I got out here, I tried to meet all the store. I tried to go to all the stores, not necessarily meet the owners, but to go to all the stores. And that's my recollection of how I met William. And uh, so this would have been around somewhere in between 96 and 98. That's what I kind of remember, William. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's let's hear the other side of the story. Okay, if I remember right, we were both picked to be shot into outer space in an experimental craft. Hmm. Yes, that was that, my recollection. That's how I got my interest in space, William. No, uh, that we may have met when you said, but I don't remember it. What I remember is we met. the the The, the memory I have of it is at a club show at the, like the Holiday Inn over on Shawnee Mission Parkway where they had split the dealer room into the A room and the um, janitorial closet where you and I had been set. You and I and um, Dave Scott, who used to run the Star Trek shows. Yes. The three of us, I think there may have been one other dealer back there. Yeah. But the three of us were back there and I remember that 
that morning, I have a guy that helps me, John Adams, who's been helping me for years and years and years at shows, a uh, good friend of Sydney's. And he, I remember him telling me later that day, because he always helped me at conventions. And he called me later in the day and said, you know, I came out to the Ramada Inn, but I couldn't find you. <laughs> he, he literally could. They hadn't put up any signage to even, because we were, there was a room up front, a ballroom, which not enough room for all the dealers. And then clear in the back, you had to walk down a hallway and around the corners. And there was another small room that they put like four of us dealers. And we barely had anybody come back there all day. Now, my own employee like, couldn't find it. It wasn't like Hall A and Hall B. No, no. At Barlow. It was like Hall A and the loading dock of a different <laughs> Yeah, the, the loading dock of the Phillips Hotel. Yeah. Hall, Hall W. Yes. Yeah. Yes. At the back half of Hall W. Well, I had set up like I, I was just getting started. I had a small setup. Chris back then hasn't done this for years, but his old setup was like, I don't know, 400 long boxes, shelves, backdrops, toys. Or it was like he built a whole store in this janitorial closet in the back. <laughs> And when, when it was crummy, we were just like, I guess we'll just pack up our stuff and leave. And Chris is like, me too. I'll see you guys in like six hours. Yes. I always love loading out of a show where you've done terrible sales is such fun. <laughs> so that's That might not be where we met, but that's where the... I, I, I can see why you remember that. That's our first time we interacted in a way where we... We bonded over mutual misery, I think. <laughs> so, well, what, what was after that? So after the mutual misery, what was it? I mean, there had to be something as you guys were kind of talking through it, you know, not just being at, at shows and uh, exhibiting and stuff like that. But I mean, like you start getting into comics. I mean, there's a little bit of a, like, you know, like a sniff test of like, what kind of comic fan are you, right? Well, I mean, I was not, when I bought that store, I was not really a huge comic guy. Mm -hmm. I bought the store from the guy that owned it partially because I was in the coin op business and I wanted to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And I was interested in comics and comic art. So I, I bought that store, but <clears throat> back then I was not, you know, way deep into knowledge about comics. Chris knew way more. He was schooling me on, Oh, you should be buying that old stuff. Don't worry about that new stuff. Buy that silver age stuff. I remember that I used to buy a lot of collections out here. And I remember I'd be down at your store and we'd talk a lot about buying old collections and marketing older comics. Yeah. And I kind of got you into buying those. And I'm really glad I did because I kind of quit buying them at some point. You know, I yeah. took my ads out of the paper. And now you have an opportunity to scoop up a lot of the great stuff that, that, yeah. that, that, that yeah, but I didn't, I didn't really know exactly how to do that back then. I was, more, I was, as with everything in the history of my life, is more like just dive into 20 foot deep water and then learn to swim once you're in percent drown and then that's isn't that that's the that's the right way to do these things right it's it's ready um well it's ready fire aim it's a way ready fire aim I'm not sure it's it took me a second there john you had me on that one first yeah yeah right right <laughs> so here you know uh uh, we already started to get some of these comics, uh, uh, these or comments in here from the stream. I love this one. Uh, this was a quick correction of my introduction. Correction: the top store, the top yeah, store. Yeah, I, I, I caught myself city. saying one of the top stores, and I thought William would correct me, but thank <laughs> you. Know, I, I, I caught I, myself. But I'll let Randall do that for me. Yeah, yeah right. Thank you, so you, Randall, for 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 correcting me in my gross misstatement of. <laughs> We need, that's why we need these commentators to keep, keep us in line. So if you guys have questions for these two characters, um, anything, if you're talking about, if we're talking about elite, if we're talking about Planet Comic Con, or if we really just want to go like a deep dive into, into comics, let's do it. So this is a great opportunity. Make sure that you're plugging your, uh, your questions in, uh, on that sidebar there for, uh, for, for Chris and William. Hey, let's talk a little bit. We're, we're going to take a little pause for the cause here. Uh, you know, Chris, you know, we started this last week and I think we're going to continue to do this throughout, you know, how we um, are going to be supporting a lot of the retailers, artists, creators, the folks that are regulars at Planet Comic Con Kansas City who are having a bit of a rough go right now, obviously with a lot of things that are kind of going on. Um, the first shout out that we want to do tonight, we want to do uh, with some uh, comic book retailers that uh, like to uh, uh, come and uh uh, exhibit at the show. Um, you got a couple of folks here, St. Louis. And uh, I'm always curious, man, how do you get folks in from, from places like Minneapolis? Well, I, I've known a lot of the dealers for many years because I, I, I was on the show circuit for many years. But once you start a convention and start advertising it, dealers find you. 
But people like Tim Lone at Comic Book College, I've known Tim was involved, I think, in my very first show back in 1999. And I remember Tim was always the first exhibitor to pay me because Tim wanted that spot right by the front door. And mm -hmm. he always got it because he's one of the most loyal dealers you could ever have. Wonderful guy. Dale Roberts, I've known for many years. Same with Dave Schmidt at All American Collectibles. Uh, Eric Meyer at St. Uh, STL Comics, which I assume is St. Louis Comics. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, he's a newer person, uh, although I'm right now negotiating with him to buy a book from him. So kind of excited about that. I'll say good things about him right now. <laughs> I'm looking to buy a Fantastic Four 48 he has in stock. So, um, And then Kent, Kent Tim has been exhibiting at Planet for at least, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe more years. So these are all very loyal people that have been with Planet. And all comic dealers right now who are convention dealers have been struggling since the lack of shows. So if you collect these, all these people specialize in, in gold and silver, but also have newer things. So please feel free to contact any of them if you, for your comic book needs. That's awesome, Chris. Thanks for thanks for bringing those to our attention. And we're going to continue to put those folks out. As a matter of fact, after the show, we'll be posting information about each and every one of them on our Facebook page. So you can go out, check out their websites, their Facebook pages, get to know them a little bit better. So, uh, so William, you started talking about this right before we went to that, to that break. Um, uh, about those early days of Elite. So tell us a little bit more information. How did you become the uh, owner and proprietor of, oh, hang on, let me edit my copy, of the most respected. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the most respected comic shop, <laughs> scratching out our notes. Yeah, yeah. Capital, it's like like the Ohio State. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a, a little bit about uh, the, the background of you kind of getting in with Elite. Well, I bought the store. I had, uh, I initially got it into elite comics because that's in the coin out business i put a pinball machine in there ah. so i knew that's how i met greg the original guy that owned the store for the first few years and he is the only person i have ever known in my life that knew they shouldn't be self employed he started the store had it for a little while and then he wanted to sell he's like if i don't have a boss i won't do anything he's like the totally self-aware like no one else is. He now works for Homeland Security. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, I, I just, I can't be self-employed. I won't do anything. So then I bought that store from him and got out of the coin out business, which the coin out business is atrocious. So, yeah. so what year was that? When, when, when was that? Uh, uh, when 90, I think I bought the store from him in 96 or seven. He's so, in 95. And I think I bought it in 96 or 97. He didn't have it a long time before he sold it. So do you know what you're getting yourself into? Did you have a good feel for it? Or was it just a wild guess? Wild guess. <laughs> but I've been in the coin out, so on the road, in a truck, driving around with my machines and bags of quarters for 10 years. And I wanted to like, the idea of being going to one place every day appealed to me. And now it's, that's my life. I go to the same place every day. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> as much I do love comics and I have lots of comic favorite comics and comic artists and all that. I actually think I like the comic business even more than I like comics. Mm -hmm. I like the, the, the whole thing of it. I like the, the cheers aspect of it, the barbershop aspect of it, the, the bargaining, the buying of collections, the, you know, going through boxes and finding cherries in there. And, and I just, the whole, the whole thing of the comic business. I, I, I like that. I'm not like, in love with the actual, I mean, I read comics, but I would not like, I don't have a personal comic collection. Mm -hmm. My comic collection is down there at the store and it's all just, you know, it's yeah. called inventory. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just don't, nothing I have comic wise is not for sale, but I, I, I think I just like the comic business more than I even like comics. So let me get this right. If you want to, if you want to stand in the store and read the comics all day, you either you you either need to buy the comic or you need to buy the store. <laughs> yeah, one or the other. So you bought the store. Yeah. And William, William likes to say, and then I always think this is hilarious. And William likes to say everything in that store is for sale, except for his dogs. He yeah. takes his dogs to work. By the way, that's important. Yeah. yeah William yeah. takes his dogs to work, and they're with him all day long, and they are the most wonderful creatures. And that's so, that half the um, people come just to see that we got a. Last year I had a bad year with dogs. I lost all three of my dogs in one year last year. But we have a new puppy. Today's his one year birthday. Excellent. And he comes in, comes with me to the store every day. And I, I think it's probably fifty percent of the people come to buy books. 
a, then another 40% come to see the dog and then 10% come to see me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's William started to say, it's also a gathering place. Uh, people, particularly on Wednesdays, people go down and they, they chat, they stop and they visit, they visit about the new books. They visit about the industry. They visit about shows. It, it's just, a, a, as he said, it's like a barbershop. Everybody wanders in and they chat. Well, and about everything, sometimes new people come in and they really want to talk about comics and we're all eyeball deep in arguing about sports. Yes. <laughs> you know, they'll be like, do you guys ever talk about comics? And you're like, yeah, but did you see who the Chiefs traded for today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, we got a great one, a great uh, question here from the from the feed here. Uh, maybe a little tough one, but William, what do you miss most about Wednesdays right now? Um, should I be sentimental or honest? Um, in the middle, I miss all my Wednesday friends. Honest, I miss Wednesday sales. <laughs> oh, God, that's, that's, fair. that's fair. As a small business owner, I mean that is the reality. I mean you have the passion for for the for the the genre for the books uh, and for the for the people that that attracts. But I mean you also have to you also have to be a working business too. So. Wednesday is really fun. You get all your friends come in. You get to chat all day. But the best part is at the end of the day when you see out that register and go like. That was a fun day. Yeah, sure. It was worthwhile. The end of the Wednesdays now when we're no one's in the shop, you see out the register and you're like, that was a lot of packing boxes. <laughs> As I like I like this, CJ, CJ Bonds. Truth is good for the soul. So I mean to be <laughs> honest in your business is a is is a good thing. And that's there's nothing wrong with that to say that it's about the people and it's also probably about, you know, doing what you love and which is, which is running a business at the same time. And I try and be straight up with people when, when people like when they're trying to sell me something or buy something, they're like, well, you know, make me a deal on this or can I get this kind of deal on that? I like to be straight up with like, I am here to take care of me first. Once <laughs> I've got my life best on and I can help you with your life best. It's so, fair. If I don't have the oxygen on, I'll pass out before I help you get yours on. So for well, people like, oh, if I win the lottery, I'll come in here and buy all this stuff for me. I go, let's just make it easy. I'll win the lottery and you guys can have all this stuff. Yeah. See, I think you got some of these. I think I think you attract you brought your friends out. And Randall obviously is a super fan here. Not only are you the comic book uh store in Kansas That's City, so but he's let's we respect the respect the hustle. To respect the hustle. Let's talk a little about a different kind of hustle that you do. Um, that's really cool. Um, Elite's known for being a comic book store and one, and of course, the comic book store in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. But you're also known for some something else that's really cool, which is some of your charitable efforts. And you guys do a yeah. lot of work in the community, uh, especially around uh, Children's Mercy Hospital and those types of charities. Tell me a little bit more about those efforts. Well, I think we started the toy drive <clears throat> about. I think this will be our seventh year. Mm-hmm. So I started with my friend Jessica, who everyone knows her as Elite Supergirl. Mm -hmm. She dresses, and I met her when she was coming into the shop to pick up comics for her boyfriend, who we had never met. So we, for a long time, assumed he was fake, and that she was just claiming to have a boyfriend to keep everyone away from her. But it wasn't. They eventually got married. But <clears throat> so at pl one of the planets, I said, "Yes, she was at this point. She was a fitness model." Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what would be a great attraction? Why don't you dress as Supergirl and stand at our booth? And she, to my surprise, went, okay. And went and bought Supergirl costume. And it all started there. And then we started doing these charity things. And we do, we have charity events 12 months out of the year. There's something going on. But all all the stuff that goes along all leads up to that toy drive for buying all the kids the presents at Christmas. Well, I mean, I know you're being really humble about this, but you guys have raised a bit of money over the years with this, haven't you? Yeah, last year we we cracked a hundred thousand dollars. We've done, I mean, in total. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome. Seven thousand last year. And uh, there was a there's a picture I think that you had on Facebook. I'm not sure if this was from last year or the previous year. I think we used it in the promo graphic. It's like you, and then you know, uh, Chris is behind you, and then there's about a line of about eight or ten other people that receipt. That oh, yeah, that's like a, I have I have that receipt. It's like, and this is not a Walgreens receipt. <laughs> this is not CVS. Not a fake Walgreens receipt. This is a Target <laughs> receipt. This is just a list of the items you bought, and it's like fifty feet long. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, 
that's you know uh kudos to you kudos to the crew that puts uh puts that together every year to do that um as a way of giving back to the community uh that's it's and it's a, it's a really special children's mercy hospital is obviously a very special place and i know a lot of the cosplayers that are associated with uh planet comic-con kansas city uh do a lot of work there and of mm -hmm. course elite supergirl being one of the you know probably one of the biggest supporters that you know that we see around that place a lot so it's it's pretty awesome yeah we just um earlier this week broke we've raised a thousand dollars on the toy drive since we've been closed down mm. that's people still calling in and buying the t-shirts and like many 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 people when they call the order like throw on five dollars for the toy drive throw on ten dollars for the toy drive yeah we're, we're so i should make a smart ass people. statement that that's more money than the store made during that period william god i hope not <laughs> <laughs> oh, ouch now, I, still, I still got all those boxes I got to send out. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I was the, store, the store's been actually, it's kind of, I mean, I'm not shocked. Everyone's been, everyone's super supportive. People are ordering stuff and I just, just packing boxes all day long. I don't love it. I mean, I didn't start a retail store because I'm like, man, I wish I could just sit around and pack boxes all day. This is awesome. Right. right. Not talk to anybody or interact with anybody just <laughs> all day long, but. I did mail order for years, William. You know that. My main focus was mail order for many years. Now you're yeah. getting an idea of what my day was like. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. With that, let's take another break here, Chris. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, some artists and creators here that uh, come to uh, Planet Comic Con on a regular basis. These are some folks, uh, uh, some folks that uh, are good supporters of the of planet for for a number of years. Everybody on this list has been an artist who has exhibited at Planet for years. Mm -hmm. In particular, this is Jim uh, Maisling at uh, Cartoon Caveman, Jim Ferguson at Making a Scene, uh, Chris Fulton at uh, Chris Oz Fulton. Uh, the two I know in particular, though, are Jeff Moy and Phil Moy, mm -hmm. who I've known since the 1990s. They were artists on the Legion of Superheroes book. And as many people know, my girlfriend, Sydney, is a fan of Legion. And she met the Moy brothers way back in the 90s. and so I've known them for many, many years. They have the distinction of having been, I think, maybe Rick Birch has been to more. I think Rick, Rick Birch has been to every planet, but they've been to all but maybe one. But uh, they've supported the show literally since the very beginning. So Jeff and Phil are always near and dear to me. We appreciate their, their supporting the event. And this year in particular, Jeff and Phil were the designers of my two planet girls, which I have pins for that I'll show here in a minute. Yeah, let me we'll see if you can pull so, those up. Jeff Moy and Phil Moy designed our two Planet Girls this year. Oh, those so, are awesome. We'll have these pins at whatever show we happen to have next, hopefully August. Right, right. So, those are fantastic. Yeah, they came out pretty well. These guys, yeah, cool. they're very talented artists. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah, and, and I think that's... You have to see those the Moys and th to think back like the, the Planet Entertainment Zone, that yes. one very small corner up front. Mm-hmm. The entire show back 20 years ago would fit inside that corner. <laughs> yes. And Chris and I anguished and sweated and 20, literally 24 hours straight to set that room. And then to, as the, the planet exists now, you're like, how could that have taken so long? <laughs> <laughs> That's like one twentieth of the show now. And we would like just, anguished over every seat and every table and who sat by who and who was across from who and who had been there longer and who had paid first and who deserved this corner and who it was just so crazy to think that that thing that we put so much anxiety into is in, in a in a map this big is like this much. <laughs> exactly we yeah. laugh about that a lot because william has been involved william and i started the show together at some point early on i took it over because william actually had to make money and we weren't terribly successful at cons com promoters early on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember the celebration. We lost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a successful show. We could have seen how much television and broke even, but yay. So, but William and I agonized over maps. And even for years after that, William and I would meet at my dining room table and spend what, William? Two days, two full days. Yeah. As, easy. We're, as we're expanding the show at Bartle Hall working on that map and agonizing over that map. 
Erasing, yeah. er erasing, writing, erasing. I got one. Oh, okay, I've got one pretty good story. If you look Years at ago room, when we were like, designing these, yeah, I'm sorry, wait, my interruption. No, and you look at the whole room and you'd be like, oh, now that guy, that we we we'd be done. Like, all right, we're done. And Chris, would be like, I don't know. This guy, he he was one of the first guys to pay. <laughs> he had to redo the whole thing. <laughs> this one guy who paid, you know, Tim Loan. Yeah. Okay, first, he should really have a better spot than this. Then we have to like tile puzzle the entire room to get this guy where Chris won after it was already said. It was it was, it was ridiculous. I was a bit painful to work with at times. <laughs> Early on, though, I remember when it was one of Jason Aaron's first shows setting up at Planet. He supported the con for years. Right. But we decided in setting up the room that it'd be great to mix people up. We'd have Jason, we'd have artists in one table and some kind of crafter in the next. And I remember we put Jason next to a woman who did doilies. <laughs> <laughs> Just because we thought it'd be nice to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, that was not, a, that was not an awesome idea. But I, I remember Jason's setup. I think it was that show. We had those tables, those eight-foot tables. And Jason set up all his trades on this. That right at 10 o'clock when the show opens, one of the legs collapsed. And Jason's table Ooh. dropped down and all his books slid off onto the floor. <laughs> It was awesome. Good that times. Was my favorite collapsing table. My favorite collapsing table is when we were at that show at that little gymnasium in Shawnee. And another dealer said, oh hey, can you guys watch my table while I go to the bathroom? Yes. And when he went to the bathroom, Chris leaned on his table and the table fell. And all his stuff poured off. Oh, no. <laughs> and put all his stuff back in the boxes and like, <laughs> Did not touch anything? No, it was fine. Everything was fine. <laughs> this <laughs> might be where that dealer finds out how those books got damaged. <laughs> uh, um, I, don't even, I don't even remember his name. Uh, yeah. We got we got a comment here. Uh, Douglas left. Uh, Douglas Leffridge. Uh, I remember the OP conventions. Great memories, guys. So you got some fans here who've been around with you with y'all for for a little while here. That's pretty cool. Hey, uh, you know. Uh, William, last time we were on, Chris was, uh, I, I kind of had it in my notes. It's like, uh, basically the question was something along the lines of let Chris rummage in his boxes. Um, and uh, he kind of walked us through some of these titles and, and was sharing books with us and stuff that he's been collecting, but also just talking about story uh, story arcs and uh, uh, and books that he just has always loved. And I want to ask that of you. I, I, from my understanding, uh, where um, Chris is very much the, the Silver Age stuff, right, Chris, with the X-Men and a lot, you know, heavy X-Men emphasis, you, your tastes kind of run in a different direction, William. Um, I mean, I like the older stuff too. My, my two favorite stories ever, the original Silver Surfer. Mm. Silver Surfer is my favorite hero. I love the original Silver Surfer. And then my other favorite comic was the Invisibles, the Grant Morrison. Invisible. Oh, yeah. And I remember reading the Invisibles and I loved it. It was like my favorite thing. And then I can't remember the publisher came out with a, a, book about the invisibles and i read that and was like how did i enjoy this i didn't understand it at all <laughs> once you went through and like oh this is all just obscure british political history this has nothing to do with what you think it is mm -hmm. and grant morrison's always like here's the story and then down here's my critique of british society but once i then i, I remember thinking like how did i love this so much when i literally didn't understand what he was referring to at all but isn't that good storytelling when you can, when there's so many, there's a couple of different levels that you can look at it. Yeah, That's the Grant Morrison stuff. It's his always is layers, you know, but Silver yeah. Surfer is my number one for sure. I don't know. I don't remember really being a morose child, but at the whole idea of this guy like giving up everything and leaving the love of his life and being forced to be the herald for Galactus and trying to find planets for Galactus devour that wouldn't, you know, kill this big population. I don't know. I, I was, Plus, I thought it was just cool that he served, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, I mean, just a classic character, too. What else? I mean, is there other, what would you, if people were to ask you, uh, is there a guilty pleasure or something that's uh, unusual in, in kind of the realm of things that you like? Hmm. Guilty pleasure. Well, I don't know anything about guilty pleasure. But I mean, people, they, I have like a certain book that when people say, hey, I want to, I want to read something, what should I get? Mm -hmm. Number one right now is Saga. Mm. If someone what, says, William? I've missed Saga. that. 
you know, the, uh, you know, saga with, uh, Oh, saga, saga. Got it. Yes. I, yes, I yes. forget who writes it now. Um, <laughs> yes, I know who it is. Brian, Brian Kavon. Yes. Brian Kavon. So that's a book we sell guarantee. Mm-hmm. If you buy that trade and you don't like it. You can bring it back. <laughs> you brought it back. Cause it's just, it's awesome. Everyone loves it. And it's not like, it's not a real, I mean, it's a science fiction and kind of fantasy book, but it's not real super genre where, Oh, I don't like that stuff. I've, Anyone can read that book and, and dig it. Mm-hmm. And then if someone says, "Oh, I like kind of like crime stuff," scalped is worth that. If you haven't read scalped, you got to get scalped. You know, we had some questions here earlier in the stream. Uh, I'm going to go back to one of them. I thought it was a, a kind of an interesting one. Uh, so if I put you guys on the spot, I apologize. Um, Tim Comer uh, talking about a little one to get a little nerdy with it. Uh, obviously, you mentioned Jason Aaron earlier in the in the in the live stream, and Jason was. Uh, one of the newer writers on Thor, but I guess, you know, what do you want to talk about this current team that's on Thor and, uh, and some of the things that are happening with, uh, with that particular book? I don't know if either of you guys have a take on it. Oh uh, yeah. That's really good. That's Donnie Cates. It's super good. Yeah. I mean, Jason had like a mammoth, like seven plus year run on Thor. And it was dynamite. I mean, I, I think Jason's run on Thor will stand up over time with, you know, Stanley and Jack Kirby on Fantastic Four and and Burn and Claremont on X Men. I think it'll be in that. Wow, that's high praise. Mount Rushmore of awesome runs. Yeah, but the uh, the uh, the new run is really good too because uh, Cates is he's got a real way out outer space crazy take on everything. So he's his Jason's was more, um, you know. Uh, Thor is a mythical god kind of take. Mm-hmm. It is more like way out there, outer space, crazy, end of the universe, you know, kind of stuff. His Cates is always go as big as possible. And if I'm reading the rumors right on the MCU stuff, I think there might be elements from uh, Jason Aaron's stuff that might be going into the next into the next Thor movie that they might be pulling some stuff and elements from that, from yeah, that the story. Yeah, the next Thor movie is based on his run, the Unworthy Thor, where – Jane Foster picks up the hammer. Yeah. Like the guy, the guy that's writing and directing it said, that's where I got this from that run on the comics. So, so that's going to be, that's going to be pretty interesting uh, to watch. Uh, Sadly, I don't think that's going to be a huge payday for Jason. That would be awesome if it was, but I don't uh, think he has the rights to Thor. So, yeah. You know, uh, Kira saying here, yeah, Saga is my favorite. So I don't know uh, uh, if, if you turn Kira on to that or Kira is already, already hip to it, but uh yeah, you got some some amens from the from the choir here on that. Um, let's do this real quick, and I've got another question here that I want to get back to. Uh, but uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the crafters and artisans, Chris, that we've had at uh, uh, Planet Comic Con in the past, and uh, we got some really fun folks this week to kind of or uh, this particular time to kind of go through. Uh, they're crafters, they're artisans, they're exhibitors, they're retailers. Uh, so we kind of mashed this up a little bit here. Uh, but, uh, you know, these are some of the things that whenever I think about like iconic uh, uh, photographs of of uh, planet, obviously there's the crowds, there's the halls, there's the panel rooms, but it always keeps coming back to these guys, the Ultra Saber guys, <laughs> and seeing their stuff on the floor. It's such cool stuff. If you're looking for, for uh, a custom lightsaber or some of these uh, lightsaber parts, those guys are pretty awesome. Um, the, uh, so we got some other folks, uh, Pendragon costumes, uh, some really amazing work on their on their stuff. If you can see, uh, go check out their website, and you can start to see some of the things they do. A lot of steampunk, uh, neo Victorian, Renaissance fashion work that they do there. Uh, Wiz Yakuza, um, a lot of really cool uh, uh, art and prints there. Lenticular stuff, um, again, just really really cool stuff. And these folks all have um, online. Uh, um, stores so there's there are definitely people that you should be checking out right now too uh collector's cash everything from games to um all sorts of geek gear um and even some mystery boxes and stuff like that so if you're miss if you haven't had a mystery box fix in a couple of months maybe that's your way to do it and then um a mandolin chain mail uh some amazing chain mail work um if you see pictures of her work, it's unmistakable. Some of the stuff that uh, that they do is is pretty amazing. So, Chris, you you always bring in some amazing folks every single year on the retail side of it, and it just 
the creativity that comes from that. It's, you know, to kind of have all these other elements uh, to the show. It's, it's always a lot of fun. Mike at a mandolin chain mail, by the way, they're very timely. They've now got some chain mail masks so they can distribute for uh, the current COVID. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're pictured on their site. So go to their, go to their uh, Facebook page, a mandolin chain mail for your very own chain mail face mask to, to go grocery shopping. <laughs> So. It's it's something you never knew that you were going to need, but now you need. How would one have known six it's months a little, ago? A little bit hard on your mask. ears. But. <laughs> That's right. A little heavier than the yeah. normal masks. It was just all over your ears or like down here and anything. It's more of a cloth mask decorated with chain. But. Ah, right on. Yeah, it's not strictly chain mail. So I dig it. You know, and that's part of this too, is people are starting to just kind of roll with this, uh, mm-hmm. this whole situation. And I, it's always, it's been really cool to see some of the creativity that's coming out of the community right now. It's hard, but it's, uh, you know, uh, these things, um, the, these sort of times kind of, you know, define us in terms of how we react to it. And a lot of those exhibitors, retailers, all those folks are, are, are doing the best they can here. Let's get back to some of this. Uh, uh this is another good one here. Another great question. Um, uh, Douglas Leffridge, in your opinion, then most overrated series or book, and also the most unnoticed gem out there, past or present? It's a good question. If you're looking at me to answer, William has much more knowledge about the newer material. I'll go. Most underrated book is the Kirby Mister Miracle. Hmm. That's, okay. one the, that's one of the best comics ever made. The, I, mean, I was I bought a collection, and those were in it. It took me all night to bag and board them because every one of them, you just got to like go through it. It's so good. And if people, I don't know if people are not going to like this, but to me, the most overrated character is the Punisher. Mm. I could agree with that. I I, I just don't, I guess if people, I see him more as not like the, he's like the misperceived, like he's the hero. I'm like, "Mm, mm, sort of. I'm kind of an anti-hero or not exactly. I don't know. I'm just not in love with the Punisher, but a lot of people super duper love him, but a little little overrated for me. Yeah, not your bag. No. Unnoticed gem. This will be an opportunity. Uh Okay, hold on. Unnoticed gem. All right, let's (laughs) zoom in. (laughs) That's the one I wanted last time, Chris. That's the one I wanted to see. it's not a gem, but come on, it's cute. Okay. Peter Porker was pretty awesome. Peter Porker was the uh, the comic relief for uh, Into the Spider Verse yeah. for me, and uh, it was one of those things when I kept seeing the the trailers. And I'm not familiar with that particular book. I knew it was out there, uh, but it was one of those like, really, are you going to add that into the mix? And then after I see the movie, it's like I don't know how you can do it without it. Into the Spider Verse was wonderful. It introduced Peter Porker into the actual kind of, of the universe, the MCU universe. It was beautiful, yeah. beautifully done. So Punisher, yeah, I got I mean, a that's the, that's the best. It'll be a short movie ever. San Diego. I've been going to San Diego since like 1987. <clears throat> About 1989, I was at San Diego Comic Con and Chuck Rosansky at Mile High Comics, one of the biggest dealers in the country, had an alcove. In that alcove, he would picked up the, what they call the Mile High 2 collection. And in that collection were several cases of Amazing Spider-Man 129, which is the first appearance of the Punisher. And he had them in nice, really nice bags and boards. And he was selling them mint, 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 five dollars a piece. Oof. That's the end of my story. <laughs> wow! I bought like five of them, and I wish every dollar I spent at that show would have been spent on that. Then I sold them when they were like two hundred dollars, and now that'd be how much, William? How much would a in how much would a nine six or a nine eight Spider Man one twenty nine go for? Nine grand. Yeah, there you go. Wow. He was selling them for five dollars. I, I bought. I remember I bought some of the Bantam Marvel paperbacks at two dollars, and some of those at five. If I would have put three of the paperbacks back at two dollars, which now bring five slowly, and bought another Punisher, I would have been better off. Okay, <laughs> Chris, enough this, of that. The, the, uh, this this guy might this this. Uh, hang on, that's not the right one. There we go. This might be uh, somebody you know, Andy McMahon. Thanks for giving the dealers a shout out. It means a lot to us, and way too many conventions don't care enough about the dealer room. So. Uh, a lot of, nice thank you from Andy there. Uh, oh, from Duncanville Books. There you yes, go. And we mentioned Andy last week, I believe, on, last Friday on our broadcast. But it, as I've said la- last Friday, a little difference with Planet from other shows is that I, as the owner, also am a comic collector and was a comic dealer for years. I was one of those guys 
in a couple of 10 by 10 booths on the corner selling my comics for years. So I have a better understanding of what the exhibitors go through than most people do. And I hope the dealers <clears throat> kind of recognize that I do give comics a priority in the room. I give comic dealers great spots. Mm -hmm. I highlight them. So thanks, Andy, for supporting the show for so long. Yeah, that's awesome. It. Yeah, thanks for watching, Andy. Uh, you know, there's uh, there's another one. Um, here's a, a good question. I think we and I think I want to I want to get to this question, but I want to ask the let's let's just kind of address the, the the topic that's on everybody's mind these days. How is the you know William? How's the current situation kind of impacting comic book stores in general? Oh, I and, about the mass Singer. Oh, there's that too, man. And we could go on about that as well. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out some of those, um, and and I think the clues are crap. I think the clues <laughs> are we are we are well on the same page with that. The clues are yeah. crap. Okay. Um, no. Uh, how's how's all this? How are you guys dealing with this? How's the comic book uh, uh, retail industry dealing with with the current situation as a whole? Well, not well. What's, uh, what's I mean, it's weird. It's it's bad, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's worse than anything else. Um, what might be worse is the, um, the internet comment people, which I, I don't know, once or twice a week make a mistake that I swear I will never do again and read comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. comments are like, if you could take pure evil and boil it down to letters, that's the comments section in the world. Don't look in the comments, Ray. I should never look in the comments, but, yeah. <laughs> but I mean like there, because we can't get comments because diamond got quarantined and then two of the biggest printers got quarantined mm -hmm. and people are like, that's it. It's the end of comics. Comics are done. The industry's over. You're like, uh, the whole world is practically shut down. I mean, it's not the end of comics. It's they're going to take four to six weeks without shipping new stuff. And people are like, Oh my God, what will you do? You're like, I don't know, maybe sell one of the other literally million other comics I have in my, warehouse basement store you know there's you know it's not like you have uh, who i feel bad for is restaurants it's not like you can you know like well we don't even stop i'll just sell these ten thousand baked potatoes i've had in my warehouse for the last 10 years that are going up in value you know mm -hmm. there's still stuff to sell and it's all going to come back just fine diamonds got a plan and i think march or may 17th i think is going to be the new ship date to come back with new books yeah. Is there, here's a question uh, from, from Kate Cook uh, in the comments. Uh, do you have any plans to still represent free comic book day at all? I'm not sure if there's a lot of stuff that's coming out right now. That's going to be able to support that. I know comic book day is on May 2nd, as I recall. I that's scrapped. Yeah. I think that's going to be kind of a rough one, right? Um, yeah. I don't know when we're going to be able to have free comic book day. Um, we already ordered the books a long time ago, so we're getting the books. Okay. So one way or the other, you will be able to get the free books because I have already paid for them. So I'm not going to stash them away. They'll, we'll give them away. But as to how and when that's going to happen, that is totally up in the air. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Hey, let's uh, let's uh, take another uh, another trip down uh, our our fun partner lane here, Chris. Let's talk about these guys. Uh, you know, William, you can you know. You can put your hands over your ears as we talk about our good friends at Clint's Comics. We always want to promote uh, the local comic stores. Uh, I know you guys are all friends. I'm only joking. So That's where I bought comics when I was a kid. Yeah, right? At Metcalf South Mall. Yeah. Well, all the, 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 the local comic shops in Kansas City have been supportive of Planet Comic Con since the very beginning. Virtually all of them have taken my flyers, uh, helped the show grow, and that's starting way back in 1999. And one of the stores that was one of the very first to get involved was uh, Clint's Comics with Jim Cavanaugh. And we appreciated that very much. Uh, they had their 50th anniversary a couple of years ago, and they're still going strong. And I, I would recommend that everyone support their local comic shops. There's new, numerous of them here. We're going in, in Kansas City area. We're going to highlight a different one uh, each broadcast. So, Yeah, and Jim is a very special person in the community. We know there's a lot of folks that miss him. A uh, very tragic loss uh, to our community, but I know that a lot of people started their their comic journey, you know, collecting books or just reading them uh, with Clint's, and uh, and he has a you know a great legacy in this town for sure. Yeah, I remember at Metcalf South Mall was Clint's Comics, Nickelodeon Arcade, Original Pizza, Orange Julius. It's everything you need right there. 
fat kid heaven. Gee, man. Like, right. Seriously, man. I'm not leaving. I remember, that I remember when I was a kid, I remember seeing Jim for the first time because it was the first time I had ever realized that an adult could go to work only wearing a leather vest. <laughs> In the shop, no shirt, just a little vest. I'm like, interesting. I didn't know adults could dress like that. But says the man who wears cargo shorts every day, all year long. <laughs> no weddings and funerals. I'll wear pants for weddings and funerals. That's it. <laughs> this, this this quarantine must be perfect for you, William. It's it's exactly the same. I mean, <laughs> being married, I guess people are dying, but no one I know. But if I'm wearing long pants, something serious is happening. It's awesome. It's awesome. You know, uh, you bring in well. You, you bring in a lot of folks. Uh, you know, uh, to do signings to have appearances at at Elite, um, and you've had uh, some really amazing folks in the past. So, um, who are some of those folks that you've brought in that have been like really memorable for you? And uh, in in your dream world, who is it? Uh, who would you like to bring into the into the store sometime? Hmm. Yeah, we've had a lot of great people in. Um, probably one of the coolest <clears throat> was when we had uh, Daryl McDaniels from Run DMC appeared in the store, did a couple songs for people standing in the store, signed a million autographs. That was really cool. Just a couple months ago, we had in um, Ed Pisker and Jim Rugg, mm -hmm. the comics kayfabe, and they did that uh, hip hop family tree. That was really cool. Um, <clears throat> I remember one of a, uh, this was now what, 12 years ago when a walking dead came out more than that, maybe 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So at the time, Tony Moore lived in Kansas city when the number one came out and he was just a friend of ours. So we wanted to support his stupid little zombie book. So we ordered like a hundred copies of this black and white book that at that time we were like, this is nothing. I mean, there's been a million zombie things. Who's, we want to support our friend. We'll buy his book. Sort of hundred copies, sold them all for three bucks a piece, and now those are worth like two thousand bucks a piece. <laughs> so for you know a couple hundred thousand dollars, I sold for three hundred bucks. Mm. But literally, no him, Kirkman, nobody knew that was going to take off. That was a total gamble. But that's pretty awesome, though. I mean, that's the fact that you can you can have you can say that you had a role in in helping that that book that artist kind of get out there. And and do yeah, that. We thing. sold 100 copies of the first of the issue one. That was our our part in it. There you go. Well, I mean, it's something that's for sure. Yeah, I think it also speaks to the fact that uh, I think you and Chris both have this really interesting eye for you know what's coming up and what's next. I think that's that's you guys have been able to hit that mark in so many different ways. I mean, and uh, you guys. I mean, do you ever look at this sort of role as a kind of a, a gatekeeper or a tastemaker? And and just kind of wonder how you got there, <laughs> yeah, within the community. Oh, I don't know. I guess I never thought of myself as a gatekeeper, a tastemaker. God, because I don't know. I guess I, I don't really see myself like that. I kind of see myself as the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. In that, I, I'm not pushing anything. Mm. I have no agenda. I don't collect anything. I don't. You know, I'm not. I'm not a Marvel store. I'm not a DC store. I'm not a, you know, indie store, you know, people that are like, they won't sell anything that's black and white or they're, you know, if it's not an indie comic with really bad art and incomprehensible story, it's you know, superhero. You know, like I'm just here to like give people what they want to buy. And, you know, there's no, no agenda, no judgment. People want to buy, come in once a month and a grown man wants to come in and buy my little pony once a month. I don't, if the guy's got five bucks, I don't care what he buys. <laughs> I just, I collect the little green presidential portraiture. That's what I'm interested in. <laughs> What's this? Uh, it's the uh, saying that uh, don't yuck somebody else's yum. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, <laughs> everyone's got their own taste, but I mean, I, I've heard stories of shops or dealers that are like, you know, they feel they're an aficionado and the other people are cretins and they're trying to educate them. I'm not, I'm trying to educate anyone. I'm just like trying to have, let everyone have a good time and like what they like. And, you know, so you're not like the comic book guy from, uh, from the Simpsons. No, no, that's not, that's not elite. Elite's more like everyone's, everyone's welcome. Just come in and buy your stuff and hang out and, 
chew the fat a little bit and BS, have a piece of cake and beat it. There you go. There you go. Drew Stewart saying, uh, I think he's talking about that, uh, that run on, uh, yeah. on walking it. So about hundred out of a 7,400 print run. I don't know how much, uh, how big of a, if that's a big run for a first, for a uh, uh, first issue or not. But, uh, I know that's very small. That's why, yeah. that's, that's why the book is so hard to get now. There you go. There you go. But who knew? I mean, a black and white zombie book, that, that was a total crapshoot. But that thing blew up like that was just a one in a million. <laughs> and I knew they made it, really, really made it, when a few years ago they had Kansas Lottery, The Walking Dead scratcher tickets. And I was like, no, yeah, The Walking Dead is could, could not be any more mainstream. That's right. That's right. Uh, Abby Gomberg saying, every time I miss the cake, <laughs> there's never enough cake. Man, I don't know. Last free comic day, I think we had six Costco sheet cakes. Oh my god! <laughs> it's, it's like it's like a, if you put them together, it's a sheet cake the size of a billiards table. I don't know how many more we could get. Oh my gosh! I want to throw in there that William can say he doesn't, and, and he and he doesn't. He really doesn't push one particular thing. He does know what's popular. He does know what people are buying. He does know what's selling well. But William has had a hand in almost every comic creator guest that we've invited to Planet over the years. Hmm. I consult William every step of the way on comic creator guests, particularly people that are publishing in the last 10 or 15 years, because he has a much better feel for who the public wants to meet. I mean, when I when I wanted to invite somebody for Planet Comic Con 2020, um, and, and William said, you got to get Art Germ. You hmm. got to get Art Germ. And... He William is the reason I sought out Art Germ. Mm -hmm. I went to New York Comic Con. I went to his table. I hung out till I could talk to his agent. Um, he was off, awfully busy, which I was happy to see. So I barely got to talk to him. But uh, I sought him out specifically because William suggested Art Germ. And he is. And that's just one example of many. So. Yeah, and of course, this virus had to mess up the fact that this was going to be that Art Germ did three shows: New York yeah. Comic Con, Planet. San Diego. He was only going to do three shows this year, mine and New York and San Diego. And I was going to be very, that was pretty special. And now yeah. it's not going to happen that way. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. I mean, but I think there's a lot of, I think you guys are doing everything you can. I think from, from, from what I'm, you're telling me about elite, I mean that you're kind of keeping those, those, those doors open and you're still serving the public, you know, and Chris, you're doing the same thing. We're trying to get those artists, um, uh, you know, in front of folks and, and try to bring uh, our exhibitors and retailers into the conversation as well. So I think it's, uh, you guys are still doing that, even though it's, it's like, you know, like you guys have said, it's weird. It's just absolutely weird right now. Yeah. Uh, but there's, there's, it's, that's the hard part about it. It's, and it's going to be weird for a little while, but you're, you're still doing stuff. William, talk a little bit about, you know, kind of a, you, you said um, you're, you're doing a lot of fulfillment stuff. You're doing a lot of, you know, boxing and taping and sending and mailing um, is that, uh, you know, I know it's tough for you, but is, you know, is that, is, is that a great way for, for, for fans to still kind of get with you and still, you know, get their, get their fix? Yeah. Everyone's just sending me text to me or Facebook message or email or whatever they need. Or we put up like tomorrow night, we're going to do a, a Facebook live claim auction. So we have a big wall of books with numbers. Awesome. Just go in and go like. I'll, you know, take number one, I'll take number five, whatever. And we just pull them down, send them a PayPal invoice and mail it out to them. And then people are, you know, getting back issues and trades. We put up like a recommended reading. So like, if this is a book, if you haven't read it, you should buy it. And then with every package, I put in some little prizes, a little surprise. So it's more fun. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, what's the fun of just buying a thing and opening it? Right. You know what you're going to get. But you get some stickers, maybe a poster, maybe two or three sheets of Thai grade toilet paper, something, you know, something nice. Something people need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reply toilet paper. Hey, uh, Mark Argenbright, we know this guy, Mr. Mr. Jellybean over at uh, uh, U.S. Toy. Uh, he had a quite good one here. What books are moving during this at-home time? What, what are, what are, what's catching people's attention? Is a lot of Walking Dead? <laughs> it is not a lot, a lot of Walking Dead. People, I mean, people have, uh, guys specifically said, hey, I want to get into some indie books. What's good? No zombies. <laughs> <laughs> We're, this isn't obviously not a zombie apocalypse. We've taken two baby steps in that direction, and people are like, hmm, no zombies for me. Yeah. 
people want something a little lighter and a little funner. I think once we can get back and the comics are back in, I think people are going to like that whole heroic journey, heroes and villains. And because the real world kind of sucks because you can't beat up your problems. You can't, you can't punch a virus. You know, you can't, you know, people's real problems are viruses and money and high blood pressure and cholesterol and, you know, a lot, you know, that people want to get back to the heroes and villains and that the thing that comics are built on heroes and saving the day, you know? I, and I think what William is saying is there's a little escapism going on, on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what people need right now. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's awesome. That's, that's what that, conventions and, and comic stores are designed for. They're designed to, they're designed for somebody like my age to take me back to my youth. What did I buy when I was a kid? Mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that, that we're involved with. So, well, I think that Chris just kind of sums it up here. Is I miss Comic Con because it's my happy place and where I can be myself. Excellent. And that's and that's pretty cool. I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, I think if they're coming in to get their 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 weekly poll and and you know sit there and jaw with you for a little bit william i mean that's that's the the added bonus you know if they're going to uh you know plan it because so they have the opportunity to do cosplay and, and to dress you know dress up and do something different than they normally are to take on a persona that they don't normally have uh, that's the cool thing about the community that uh that planet comic con brings together and i think uh, and you guys are, are obviously a big part of that i mean you know uh an event that uh, that started uh, 20 years ago, still going really strong. So it's it's really cool that you guys would um, have the opportunity to do that. And then Chris has been you know, able to carry that forward. And William, you've been able to do the same thing at Elite from your side of, uh, side of the world, the comic well, I think world. that's the thing with both the comic shop and the convention is it's cool to go to a place where you know you're with your people. Yeah. You know, you go to anything you go to a restaurant you go to a bar you go to a family reunion you know those aren't i mean your family reunion your family but you, you you don't know whether they're into your thing you go to planet comic con those are your people yeah no one is going to go like oh uh, why are you dressed as captain kirk <laughs> you know, if you wear that to work people are going to be like you need to go to hr because i did not look good as uhura <laughs> I, I beg to differ <laughs> I, I thought you were a dynamite word. Yes. There you go. Now, if you, if you ever want to have the, the question of whiskey, a move, but you know, whatever you do, you. <laughs> we don't judge anybody. That's the great thing about Comic Con and about comic shops in general. Yeah. You don't judge. You can be yourself. That's, so I think it's prefer, an important part of that genre of, of you this. Know, like, I prefer the, like the guys that'll come in that are like cosplayers that are all like, this is like a new thing to cons is the like fit dudes. <laughs> like, I'm dressed as Wolverine because I'm super fit. You're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I like a guy that's about five six, about two sixty, dressed as Robin. That's the real cosplay thing to me. Not the like. I've always wanted the place where I could not wear a shirt because I work out all the time. You're like, whatever, go to the beach. I think that's why Christopher Hemsworth and uh, did such a, a, a service to the to the cosplay community. Uh, with his portrayal of Thor in Endgame, I think uh, I think he just kind of made all of us like, well, I could do that. Yeah, <laughs> they saved that. They were this close to ruining it when he came back. If he would have come shed, back, fit, shed the pound, shed the pounds automatically, out, that would have ruined the whole thing. Yeah, we got Odin sleep and everything else. Now all of a sudden, we got what? We got we got Thor diet. Yeah. I mean, come on, they don't do this to me. That Thor, that's that made it. <laughs> But the problem is you can't tell whether it's Fat Thor or whether it's um, Big Lebowski. <laughs> it's the same costume. You're like, okay, we have got a beard, so I guess that's that's cool. And you got the hair. It's, it all comes down to the White Russian. If you're carrying the White Russian, then it's Lebowski. Then we know. Yeah, I think I may. I think I might have thought. My I've never done costume. This might be my combo of Fat Thor Lebowski combo mashup. Yeah, which would just be Fat Thor with the White Russian. So there we have it. Next Planet Comic Con, Kansas City. William, you're going to dress up as Lebowski Thor. Fat Thor Lebowski. It's on. It's on. I in think you're able to find him at the Elite Comic Party on the Pillar. Yep. <laughs> so, same place every time. Same place every time. Speaking of same places every time, this is my cue to kind of start wrapping you guys up. 
we will be doing this again, and we're going to be doing this on Wednesdays for a little while here um, to be talking comics on Wednesdays. We just kind of want to have a little bit of a free form conversation this week uh, to go get you guys used to this and get you used to these uh, these two funny and interesting gentlemen who we've only just cracked the surface of some of the stories they have. We're going to talk, do some specific stuff, maybe even dive into some specific books, different eras, maybe even go into a little bit more of Chris's collection and uh, and William's collection, which William's collection, as we know, is the inventory at Elite Comics. So, what you uh, see tomorrow night, William? What time is that auction again? I want to plug William's auction again. Uh, yeah. Five thirty to seven. Five p.m. to seven p.m. Five thirty to seven. Five thirty p.m. to seven thirty p.m. tomorrow, Thursday, April twenty third. Go to Elite Comics on Facebook. Yep. And you can see a live auction at William's store. And by the way, uh, Andy from Duncanville Books, who asked the question earlier, Duncanville Books has like a weekly auction on his page too. So you can go to duncanvillebooks.com or call Duncanville Books down in Texas and find out when they do an auction. So I'm just trying to plug these stores that are that are trying to do something. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, there's the information for Elite Comics. Uh, William, it was great talking to you today. We'll, be, we'll, we'll come back and we'll do this again next week, right? Yep. Sounds good. Awesome. Chris, thanks for being here too. I think it's going to be, we're looking forward to, I, I want to see more what's in those boxes behind you. So we got some more fun stuff that we can do. Cause there's more, there's more stuff where that Peter Porker came from. Yes. <laughs> there, and, there is. Uh, that is Millie the model collection. Uh, we talked about this this last time. And, and, and what yes. was the, the, they were awesome. They were awesome. Who is it? Uh, was it, uh, was it Tessie the nurse or something Tessie like that? Tessie the typist and Nellie the nurse. Nellie the nurse. Of course, there has to be the alliteration, right? Yeah. You know, we all decided Nellie the nurse is the one who's still working and is really busy these days. Yes. Nellie, yeah. Nellie's quite busy. Yeah. So everyone at the hospital. So we've got some other things happening. This is my time to plug out some of the other stuff we got. We've got this upcoming live stream on Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. If you guys haven't heard, uh, We've got a, a great guest with us for the Cosplay Crafter live stream series with U.S. Toy Magic and Costume Shop, uh, our good friend Dustin Evans, who is also behind the scenes today, helping us out with some production assistance. They will be running a live stream on Sunday, 2 p.m., facebook.com slash Planet Comic Con Casey slash live with Oh My Sophie. And she's going to be talking about cosplay and crafting, but she's also going to be talking a lot about this social media empire that she has started to build for herself and she's uh she's a fantastic force within the local cosplay community and we're looking forward to uh jelly bean having the opportunity to talk with her and maybe mr jackson i'm hoping that you're gonna be able to pop in i will um, pop in awesome and you guys can you can join the conversation on sunday um so this is uh the opportunity to thank the folks that are kind of behind the scenes here uh again dustin evans who you guys can't see who's off screen who's waving like a madman and just kind of laughing and pointing out all the really good comments for us. So uh, Chris, thanks for, uh, for uh, getting us, uh, getting us all together to be working on this stuff. Uh, my partner in crime over at us toy, uh, Mark Argenbright, AKA gel E bean, who you'll be talking to on Sunday. Uh, and then of course our great sponsors, uh, planet comic con uh, sponsors uh, who have been supporting us uh, this year and continue to support us as we move towards uh, August. And so, uh, we also want to thank them for coming along for the ride. So, hey guys, I want to say thank you very much. Uh, and we'll uh, let's do this again next week, and let's just meet up right here, right? Sounds like a plan. I was I was kind of busy next week, but I'll try to make time. If you could <laughs> just free up some time, that would be awesome. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. Absolutely. Take care. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Mission sequence start. Six, five, four, three. Two, one, zero, all engine running. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11.